Back in the early 1990s, a friend told me that I have a curse when it comes to game consoles. He was referring to a couple of disasters that happened within a year of each other regarding two different game systems. One involved a Super Nintendo, which I talked about in a previous video, and the other involved the Sega CD, which I'm gonna talk to you about today. Something disastrous happened with that one. It was 1992, I was 17 years old, and I was still working in a grocery store, and I had recently got a promotion. I started as a bagger and I became a cashier. So now I was making more money, around $6 an hour. So I was buying a lot of video games for my two game systems that I played a lot of, the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. I was more into the Genesis though, and I bought more games for that than compared to the Super Nintendo. I grew a fondness for Sega that I didn't have before the Genesis, and I had heard about the Sega CD coming out near the end of 1992, and it was starting to be covered in the magazines. It didn't have as much fanfare as the Super Nintendo, but the thing about the Sega CD was that it was going to be $300. So I decided to ask for it for Christmas of 1992, and I ended up getting it. And it ended up being what we call today a Model 1, and this slips underneath your Genesis like this. There's a little bit more to it than that, but yeah, it's an add-on for your Sega Genesis. So yeah, it was a stage in my life where I wanted a lot of video games, and I wanted a lot of game systems. Luckily, I outgrew that stage. Now, I cannot tell you that I was as excited about the Sega CD as I was the Super Nintendo or the Genesis or anything else. It was an interesting system and it came packed with a lot of games and a lot of material. One of them was a game called Soul Feast. This is a horizontal shooter and it looks like it could have been on the Sega Genesis. It wasn't much more advanced. In fact, it was released on the Genesis at some point, but this version did have good music. And I mean, it was an interesting game to have in the box. Another game that came in the box was the Sega Classics Arcade Collection. It pretty much had four Genesis games stuffed into one disc. I guess they were trying to demonstrate how much stuff they could pack into a CD. It had Streets of Rage, Revenge of Shinobi, Columns, and Golden Axe. I'm not sure why they called it the Arcade Collection since these are the Genesis versions of these games, but some of the arcade music and sound effects did make its way into the Golden Axe version that's on this disc. Even with that, I don't think they should have called this the Arcade Collection. They should have called it the Genesis Collection. What's interesting is that they took away the two-player mode for the Golden Axe. The disappointing thing about it was that a lot of people already had those games if they had a Genesis. I know I had them, or at least I had new friends that had them, and I could borrow those same games that were on the disc. A lot of you are probably wondering at this point, what is the disaster that you speak of? I'm getting to it, just give me another minute here. I just want to talk more about what was in that box. We also got Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, and this had some full motion video on it. Mine does not work anymore for some reason. I pop it into my Sega CD and uh, that I have hooked up in here and it doesn't work. By the way, the Sega CD I play with in this room is a Model 2. But I gotta say, Sherlock Holmes, I was very disappointed with it at the time. I just was so bored with it as soon as I turned it on. It's just not my kind of game. I played it a couple times maybe and then just put it in a drawer somewhere. Let me know if you've played Sherlock Holmes and if so, have you beaten it? I do know it's all about solving mysteries and there was even this fake newspaper that came in the Sega CD box and I think that had some clues in it that you could use in the game. Maybe I'll give it another try in the future if I can get a cheap copy that actually works. Sega also included something called Rock Paintings, and that was some music set to a slideshow, pretty much. It had Jimi Hendrix songs, it had Fleetwood Mac and Chris Isaac, and a band called Little Feet and Information Society. I've never heard of those last two, but I'm sure some of you have. 
They also included some music on a regular CD. These did not have any visuals that I know of. Sega called it the Adventurous New Music Sampler Hot Hits. It has songs from Saigon Kick, Yo-Yo, The Wolfgang Press. I've heard of a few of these bands, but for the most part, I listened to that music at the time and I was not really into it. I don't have this CD anymore, but even if I did, I couldn't play it for you anyway. I would get a copyright violation. But in addition to those songs that they included, you could also play your own CDs. And at the time, I was starting to buy some CDs, including Metallica and some other heavy metal bands I was into. I was also into grunge because it was 1992. I was into Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and I actually put an Alice in Chains CD into the Sega CD and that's when the disaster happened. That was an album called Alice in Chains Dirt. I believe I listened to some of the music through the TV and then I went to bed or something and turned the system off. But the next day when I woke up, I went to turn on the system and it did not turn on. And I could not get it to eject the CD obviously because the whole unit didn't have any power to it or something. I couldn't get anything on the screen. I had just been playing games and CDs the previous day so it didn't make sense to me why it would just die overnight while I was asleep. I remember being pretty furious and I remember thinking about the Super Nintendo disaster that had happened and now I had this and I just felt like I had the worst luck in the world. But anyway I wanted to get it working again so I did everything I could. I disattached it from the Genesis and I unplugged it and plugged it back in anything I could think of. I was not really electronically inclined back then, so I didn't really know how to fix things. At some point, I said to myself, I'm not gonna be able to fix this, I'm gonna have to take it back. But I want my CD back. So what I did was unscrew the unit and took it apart, and I attempted to extract the CD. And I remember that I could not get it out. Maybe knowing what I know today, I would probably be able to get it out. But back then, age 17, I couldn't get the CD out. I, it felt like it was locked into place and the Sega CD was not going to give it up. So I washed my hands of it and went to my mom and I said, my Sega CD broke. I need to exchange it for one that works. I don't remember if she took me to the store or and then I went inside and did that or whether or not she went and did it on her own. But I ended up getting another Sega CD system and I lost my Alice in Chains CD. I still had the empty case for the CD and all I could do was stare at it at that point. I was pretty furious because I loved that CD. Looking back all these years later, I think I know why that Sega CD stopped functioning. It has to do with a fuse that they have inside the system. You see, the Sega CD does not have its own on-off switch. It's attached to the Sega Genesis, and when the Sega Genesis gets turned on, the Sega CD turns on too, if you do not have a cartridge plugged into the Genesis. But the Sega CD does have its own AC power adapter, so when you pl wanna play a Sega CD game, you have to power the Genesis and the Sega CD separately with two different plugs. Now, since these systems plug into the wall, Sega wants to protect them from power surges. Since the Sega Genesis has an on-off switch, having it in the off position protects it pretty much from power surges. However, since the Sega CD does not have a power switch, it is pretty much unprotected from power surges, which is why they added a fuse to the inside of it. And these fuses, have been known to blow. Chances are if you see a non-working Sega CD on eBay, it's because the fuse has blown. It's something that's not very common for other game systems. Usually those have on-off switches and therefore do not need a fuse. That is probably what happened back then when I was asleep, a power surge came and my Sega CD was plugged in, that fuse broke, and it is deep inside the game system. There's nothing in the manual for the Sega CD that talks about how to change a fuse. Nowadays we have the internet though, and I actually have done a fuse replacement on the Model 2 that I have in this room. Because when I bought it, it was non-working as well. 
I first did a bypass of the fuse on the inside because in my gaming setup, I do have the Sega CD protected with a switch. But like I said, I made a bypass for that fuse. I just made a wire go from one end of the fuse to the other. Later on, I went inside and removed that bypass and I removed the old fuse and installed a new one because I thought maybe one day if I sell that Sega CD unit to somebody, I wanna make sure it has a proper fuse on the inside and I don't want it to uh, fry on them. But anyway, it took a long time for the Sega CD to grow on me. I eventually bought a game called Road Avenger and I thought that was a perfect fit for the Sega CD. Later on, when I reached this collecting phase of my life, I played a game called Wirehead, and that became one of my favorite full motion video, video games. I do have a modest Sega CD collection, but truthfully, I hardly ever power the Sega CD up. Yes, a lot of the games are duds, but if you dig deep enough, you will find some great games on it. In the end though, that game system, the Sega CD, was the beginning of the end for Sega. It damaged their brand a lot, and they went on to another failure, the 32X, and then another failure, at least in the US, the Sega Saturn, and they pretty much lost track of how to run a video game company. Speaking of the beginning of the end, this is the end of my own video. I hope you found this tale that I just told entertaining. In the meantime, I have two more videos on the screen for you right there. Feel free to watch those, and I'll see you next time.